Hey, I'm Allison from Learning at the Primary Pond. I'm a literacy specialist, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you my step-by-step -step process for taking kindergarten students from drawing all the way to writing. This can be a challenging thing to do, but it can also be a lot of fun, and I love to see their growth throughout the year. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I post a new video about teaching literacy in K2. So question number one, when your kinders start the year, are they usually scribbling or drawing or writing or do you have a mix of kids? Let me know in the comments. Curious if your kids are again scribbling, drawing, writing or a combination. Um, you probably already know that if your kids are just scribbling or drawing, that's actually a great thing because learning to draw with details helps kids learn to write. So you can start exactly where they are and build from there. So toward the beginning of the school year, I do a lot of drawing instruction. And when I say that, I don't mean like, okay, we're all going to learn how to draw a dog. I just mean that I allow them to choose whatever they're going to draw about, but I teach specific lessons on drawing with details, using different colors, things like that. So I only have a black marker right now. I would normally be modeling this like under the document camera or on big chart paper and I'd use different colors, but just for our purposes, I'm gonna, you know, give you a little tidbit of a drawing lesson. So I, first I would talk about getting my idea, like that is one lesson in itself. Okay, I'm gonna, you know, draw about the time that we adopted our cat, Max. So um, I'm not gonna draw the whole picture here, but I would do as many details as possible. And I think what I'm gonna focus on for our little um, demo mini lesson is just how to draw like the details on an animal because kids do love to try to draw animals. So let's imagine that I've got like, of course, my background and all of that. And then I'm gonna talk about, okay, now I'm imagining, I'm just gonna close my eyes and imagine, what do I see on Max? Well, he's got these little ears and um, his face, he's got a nose, he's got his little mouth and his eyes and okay there is his head and i think oh you know he has like kind of like almost like some little stripes on his head and then i need to think about okay so he's got a little neck and then you know his body and he's got a tail that kind of goes like this um here are his paws he has four legs so i'm going to try to show all four legs and so as you can see i'm just kind of like thinking aloud for my kids and showing them how I like picture what he looks like. He's got like some spots on him and stuff. Um, and his tail is striped. And so one mini lesson could literally just be here is how we draw an animal with details. And that's all we talk about. I might then encourage the kids to choose a topic, maybe if they have a pet or, you know, they went to the zoo so that they could practice drawing animals with detail, but I do leave it open-ended and they can choose their own topics. So I will draw this and then the kids will draw and that's about it. Writing workshop at the beginning of the year for me and my kids is very simple. Like I said, I would draw more. Um, but you got a picture of how I would do like the think aloud while I'm drawing and then add details. Um, I could also have the kids help me. So I might say, okay, now I want to draw him and my cat, Lindsay. All right, like what should I include on Lindsay or pick another animal and have the kids tell me what to draw. That can be really helpful too once you've already talked with them about drawing with details. So I would have multiple, multiple mini lessons over a period of weeks on drawing. One of them might be like, okay, here's how to draw the details on a person's face. We did animals, now let's do people. Another might be like, here's how we draw a background, like, you know, what's happening in the background of our picture. Another lesson might be, here's how we use multiple colors. And of course, you're going to continue to model these things, but I, I peel those apart and make them just one mini lesson each so that the kids can really just focus on one thing at a time. And over time, they too begin to add more details to their drawings. It doesn't happen overnight, but when I see more details, I know that we are getting closer to um, them being able to write, which is the ultimate goal. But drawing for now is great. One thing I wanna mention with drawing is that, like you can see I'm not really a great artist, but <laughs> I don't, in front of my kids, I don't say like, oh, that looks bad or whatever. I just talk about how I'm not 100% sure how to draw this, but I'm gonna be a risk taker and I'm gonna do my very best. 
and then move on, right? So we talk a lot about taking risks and that actually comes into play too when you're getting kids to add labels to their picture. So speaking of adding labels, that is what I wanna talk about next. You know, over multiple weeks I'm teaching like these drawing mini lessons, but then, you know, at the same time, I'm also teaching the letter sounds. The kids are learning the alphabet and I teach more than one letter per week. So, you know, we're learning them relatively quickly. Some kids more quickly than others. But I begin in my own drawings as I'm modeling each day in our little writing workshop, I eventually begin adding labels to my pictures. So a label could be writing Max, since that's his name. Um, if there's a sun, it could be labeling the sun as sun, right? And I did this pretty quickly, but when I am actually modeling for my kiddos, I use an alphabet chart. They eventually get their own copies of this alphabet chart, but this can help them figure out what letters to write. So for example, um, let's say that I wanted to, like he was on the grass, okay? So I'm gonna model for them how I stretch out. Grass grass the kids probably can't segment fully a lot of kids can't segment quite yes but they can at least stretch out the word you can use like a rubber band or slinky to model that and then okay i'm thinking of the sound g it starts with g all right i see a picture of a gate gate starts with g so i'm going to write the lowercase letter g okay grass grass next i hear er like rat so i'm going to write the letter r Grass. Okay, I hear the short A, A like apple. Grass. Ooh, I hear this sound. Now you'll see that's not how you spell grass, but I'm not going to add a double letter because I actually want to model at first spelling incorrectly. And the reason for that is because I want kids to become comfortable with taking, as we call them, spelling risks. So I might tell them later, hey, you know what? This is Ryan spelled grass incorrectly. It actually has two S's at the end and you can always go back and fix it, but you have to be clear on your purpose. You're showing them how to stretch out words and listen for sounds, right? You're not in this moment teaching them how to spell grass. That's not your purpose. Your purpose is to get them to be spelling risk takers, to be brave. And so in my opinion, it is okay to model incorrect spelling and it, it's good to tell the kids, hey, you know, this actually wasn't correct but what I hope you know is that it's okay to just do your best and move on, right? Be a spelling risk taker. So anyway, I am, you know, like labeling and if kids pick up on this and they start labeling on their own right away, amazing. Not all of them will. However, after I've modeled adding labels for several days and the kids have continued drawing, I will then say to them, okay, everybody's gonna write at least one label on their picture today. Now, you know you have some kids who you give them an alphabet chart. I do like to give each kiddo an alphabet chart to use for support, and that stays in their writing folder. And you have some kids that will be able to do this. Great. You will have some kids that will be a little hesitant or nervous. And so that day that I tell everybody, hey, you gotta do at least one label, I make it a point to work with each child who needs my help so that every kid can have that experience of writing a label. So I break down the process just like I was doing with grass and I'll give them help. I don't write on their paper for this purpose. I let them do all the writing. It's okay if it's wrong, that's not the point. The point is to start listening for sounds and applying that knowledge. Um, but I give them that experience of having written a label successfully. So after that, then my expectation is that they are writing labels on their pictures. And again, I'm continuing to model, modeling different pictures every day. I feel like modeling is just, it's important in any grade, but especially in kindergarten as you're teaching them to draw with details and move to writing, especially important. Okay, so I continue doing that, but then after a little while, I actually also start teaching them how to write sentences or modeling how to write sentences. So I don't know, let's say whatever, I have a picture of a kite, I was flying a kite, etc., etc. So I would do more detail for them, right? I can still label kite. You can decide if you wanna put the silent E or if you wanna leave it off because we're in modeling invented spelling. But um, next I would start modeling how to write a sentence. And I'll say, okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plan my sentence. A sentence is a complete thought. 
I'm going to say the sentence to myself. I'll say, I was flying a kite. Say that with me. I was flying a kite. Okay, now there's going to be five words. I'm going to draw a line for each word in my sentence. Say it again with me. I was flying a kite. And I know my period is going to go at the end of my sentence. So now I need to write the words, right? I, I know how to spell that, was, let me listen for the sounds and use my alphabet chart, was, w w watch, W, w uh, 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 you, w uh, z, z, okay, Z. Let me read my sentence. I was flying, f flying, f I hear the f first. Full, fly, I. Then you might just say to them like, okay, this is the ing, ing. I was flying a, and then I would model the same for a kite. Okay, so it takes a little while, but I like to model every single, you know, stretching out every single word and listening for the sounds. And so for multiple days, I'll model adding a sentence to my picture. Again, just like with labeling, some kids will pick it up. They'll be able to do it on their own and they'll be good to go. But after I've modeled multiple, multiple times, I'll say to the kids, okay, everyone is gonna write at least one sentence on their picture. So just like I did with labeling, I will let the kids that can do it go for it, but then the kids that need my help, I will make sure that they all have a successful experience that day. So I'll sit down with them and it does take a little while. It does help if you have an aide or a parent volunteer, but I will sit down with them and help them have the successful experience of writing a sentence. So from that point on, I am encouraging them to write sentences. Do they all, um, you know, have spaces? No. Do they all have periods? No. Are the words spelled correctly? Not necessarily. But my purpose here is not perfection. During other times of the day, yes, we're working on phonics. We're talking about finger spaces and periods. Even during writing time, we always talk about it. But the main purpose of this is for them to get comfortable with getting their ideas down on paper. And also when you have them stretch out the sounds in words and write them, that is solidifying their phonics knowledge. They're getting to apply the things that they're learning about the alphabet to actual writing. And that is really powerful and good for their phonics development as well. I would love to dive more in depth with you about my process for teaching writing in kindergarten, first, and second grade. I have a free in-depth training that's a little bit over an hour. You can sign up for totally free. Look for the link below this video. Sign up so you can get a lot more information and details about teaching writing in kindergarten and beyond. I got some freebies for you as well for those who sign up. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.